In today's video, I am going to continue working on the mini jet boat project. Not much has been done to it since the last video. I did build a dolly that it is sitting on. That way I can move it around the shop by myself. It also gives it enough clearance for the engine stand to slide underneath it. But other than that, I haven't really done any work to it. And the reason for that is I need to make an upgraded bearing plate for it and I had to wait for the MPCNC to get finished before I could do that. And if you saw my last video, I finished the MPCNC. So let's head over here to the workbench and I will show you what I need to do to continue working on the jet boat. This is the bearing plate that comes from Jetstream and as it is, it would actually work. I could weld it onto the intake and everything would probably work just fine but I've got a few concerns with it that I would like to improve. Now, this is a universal plate. I believe it's made for Yamaha and Kawasaki. And the difference is these four holes right here are not needed by Yamaha. Now, this is the bearing assembly and you can see it's got this rubber seal that runs all the way around this circle right here. The problem is that rubber seal touches these four circles, just barely touches it. And I'm afraid that if it shifts, if I hit something hard in that boat and something shifts, it could start a water leak out of one of these four holes. So if I don't need the four holes, there's no sense having them there. The next issue is these two holes line up with the alignment pins on the bearing assembly. And the problem with that is these four holes are through holes, so there's nothing to keep these pins from just falling out of those holes. And then the third thing that I would like to fix is when this mounts on to here, it's welded on to the intake tube right here, and there's nothing supporting this other than the intake tube. So I'm afraid if there was some type of catastrophic failure, this would just spin and it could break that intake tube off or it could bend the intake tube. So I'd like to add something to give it just a little bit more support. So I've drawn up my own version of a bearing assembly plate on the computer. I've got the MPCNC set up over here on the workbench ready to go. So it's time to mill some aluminum. Now, if you're following along and you're wondering how to mill aluminum with the MPCNC, I have done a video in the past on how to do that and I will put a link to it right up here in the corner of the screen and also down in the description. So like I said, the MPCNC is ready to go. Let's head over here to the workbench and fire it up. So that process has completed and I now have my new bearing assembly plate. Now what you just saw in that time lapse actually took about an hour and 45 minutes to run because running aluminum on the MPCNC is a slow process. It's almost just like 3D printing. You just have to sit there and wait for it to finish. But I'm happy because I have the end product even though it did make a complete mess all over the shop. I've got these 
thin aluminum chips all over everything. But like I said, I'm happy because I have a plate that works. And as you can see, the four holes are gone. My alignment pin holes are not through hole. They just go down just enough for that alignment pin to do its job. And if I place everything here on the bearing assembly, you can see that the alignment pins fall in the place on both sides there and everything works and lines up. So I'm very happy with this. I am ready to now go mount this in the boat. All right, so I'm here in the boat. I've got the bearing assembly plate lined up exactly how I want it to go here on the intake. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the welder and just start putting some tacks around here one at a time. And I'm gonna take my time doing this, letting the heat dissipate in between each tack. Because remember, there is a rubber seal on this bearing assembly right here. And, and I don't wanna ruin that from the heat from the welder. And then also as I tack this in place, I'm going to turn this periodically to make sure that it didn't lock up or freeze by this getting at a different angle from also the heat from the welder. And I'm also going to apologize in advance because it is very hard to get good shots welding here inside the boat. I know that from welding the hull and doing all this other welding, but I'm going to try my best. So now I'm going to start tacking this into place. And I just did two test tack welds on here and I took this off because I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't damaging this rubber seal with the heat from the welder and I am not, everything looks good. So I'm going to keep working on this. At this point in time, it is tack welded into place and I'm satisfied with the tack welds. What I'm gonna do to save some time is I'm gonna swing that engine hoist around here put the engine in the boat and make sure that angle is correct because the last thing I want to do is get it fully welded and then find out that the oil pan rubs the bottom of the boat because that angle shifted or something happened in between the last time I put the engine in and now and this will just save me some time because there's a whole lot of bolts holding that intake and the impeller and everything in place and this will keep me from having to remove it, add it back, remove it, add it back. So if it passes the test, I will then pull the intake out of the boat, put it over here on the weld table, and then do a full weld up. So I've got the engine hanging from the engine hoist, and you can see I've got it hooked up right here to that bearing assembly on that Lovejoy connection, and everything looks fine. I'm at the right angle and all. So this bearing assembly plate is ready to be fully welded to the intake. And while I've got this engine sitting here hanging in place exactly where it needs to be, I figured I'd go ahead and try and do something with the motor mounts. And I mocked up this little motor mount out of wood just as a little test piece before I start cutting and welding aluminum. And it looks like it's going to fit just fine. So I need to also, while I take that intake out and do some welding, I need to make four of these as well. All right, so I got my motor mounts made, but 
not everything went as planned because I made two big mistakes. The first was on the rear mounts. That's what these are right here. I made them too tall. So I tried to shorten them. I put this one on the belt sander and tried to shorten it by taking some meat off of the bottom. But as you can see right here, I screwed up the angle and it just kept getting worse from there. And these should be leaning more forward like that. So this screwed up the angle and I didn't even put this one on the belt sander once I saw my mistake on this one. And then I abandoned that idea because I realized that on the fronts, I welded these too quickly because I was filming and I got in a hurry and I put too much heat into these. I didn't let them cool down in between welds and I have warped them. So I don't know if you can see that on camera. This is a flat surface and it's rocking back and forth pretty good. That messed up my angle. Also messed up the height. This one's not as bad, but I figured I've got two mistakes here. It would probably be quicker just to remake another set than to try and fix these, which is exactly what I have done. You can see here, I've got my second set here in the boat. And what I did is I bolted these onto the engine. I set it in place and let it hang from the engine stand. I hooked it up to the intake and I got my height correct, my angle and position all correct on these four motor mounts. Now, these are just tacked in the place. You can see here, just three tacks on each one. So what I'm gonna do now is go through and fully weld these. And through the magic of video editing, I've got these fully welded into place and it only took a couple of seconds for you guys, but it took me about an hour. But this is done. The motor mounts are in place. They are solid. They're gonna hold that motor in and that motor is not gonna go anywhere or shift on me when I get it in here and start driving the boat. And as you can see here, I have got the engine sitting on those motor mounts and everything seems to be okay. It is not hanging from an engine hoist. So it's in there and you can see right here, the bearing assembly and everything is correct, the right spacing and right angle. So this thing is ready to start wiring and plumbing and get it fired up for the first time. So I'm gonna end the video right there. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.